Good morning friends. Welcome back to Pannika's Tutorials. In the last video, I have discussed various features of C programming language such as C is robust, C is easily extendable, C is a structured programming language, C is portable. All these things I have discussed in detail. I hope you have watched that video. If you did not watch that video, I request you to go back and watch that video and come back to this video. In this video, I want to discuss basic structure of a C programming language. Now you can ask me why we should discuss about the basic structure of a C program. Because one of the future of the C is structured programming language. If it is a structured programming language, we need to follow a particular structure whenever you are writing the program. So in this video, we will discuss what is the structure, what are the various sections will be there in a C program. All these things I will discuss in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First, let me write various sections in the C program. Then I will discuss each section in detail. The first section we will have is the documentation section. We will have the documentation section. I hope it is visible for you. And then we will have the link section. Then definition section, we will have the global declaration section, and then we will have the main function. The main function will consist of two parts. One is the declaration part and then you will have the executable part okay once this main function is completed you will have the sub programs or user defined functions So this is about the basic structure of a C program. We will have various sections such as documentation section, link section, definition section, global declaration section and we will have the main function which consists of two parts such as declaration part, executable part and then we will have the user defined functions. Now let me discuss what is this documentation section. The documentation section consists of various information such as what is the name of the program you are writing some c program what is the name of the program who is the author for that program on which date he or she has written this program all this information if you want to write you can write in the documentation section now you can ask me sir all these things will be there in the english now how can i write them because we said that C programming language follow certain syntax. We will have a various number of tokens such as keywords. We will have identifiers. We will have the constant, string constant, special symbols, operators. All these things will be there. But what is the name, author, all these things, how the C program or the C compiler will look at. Now, this information you can write using the single line comments. Okay, single line comments means whatever the information you want to write, if it is finished in a single line, then you can use the two backslash symbols, then whatever you want to write, you can write it. So, this is about the single line comments and even you can write it as a multiple lines or double lines, more than one line is also permitted. So, you will write line number one, line number two, line number three, at the end you will write star and backslash. Is it clear? So this is the way you will write the single line comments and double line comments. Whenever the C compiler compiling this program, it will neglect the single line comments and double line comments and rest of the program it will execute it. Okay. So this is about the documentation section. Now let me discuss about the link section. When I discussed about the features of C programming language, I said C is robust. Why I said the C is robust? It has the rich inbuilt functions and operators. Even we have said that 
various inbuilt functions such as printf, scanf, malloc, calloc, okay, realloc, free is there, std, str, len, so many inbuilt functions are there. If you want to use those inbuilt functions, you need to use the header files, okay. Now, what are the header files you need to use such as hash include stdio.h, hash include stdlib.h, hash include math.h because if you want to use a particular inbuilt function, you need to use the particular header file. So, all those header files, whatever you want to use, you will write here in the link section. Now, let me discuss what is the definition section consists of. The definition section consists of symbolic constants and macros. Now, what is this macros and symbolic constants? Let me discuss with a simple example. The syntax for it is hash define variable name or the identifier. Let me take it as pi and you have the value such as let's take the 3.14. You know that pi value is 3.14. Now, every time instead of writing the pi value 3.14 every time, you can write at once in the starting of the program such as hash define pi 3.14. Please remember these two important points. Whenever you are writing the hash defined, you should not use equal. Okay. And you should not end with a semicolon. Okay. Once you have written hash defined pi 3.14 in the program, suppose let's take that you have pi into pi is there. Then automatically when you are running it, the pi will be replaced with a value called 3.14 and 3.14 it will perform the multiplication and it will give the result to you. So this is about the definition section. Now let me discuss what is the global declaration section. To make you understand about the global declaration section I need to discuss about the variables. We have various types of variables. We have the local variables or even can say that auto. We have the register variables. We have the static variables. We have the global variables which is external variables. Now let me discuss about the local variables and the external variables. Now to make you understand that one let me give a simple example. Let's take that in your home TV is there. Your father has purchased the TV. Now everyone can use the TV. Am I right or wrong? Only it is not specific that your father will use or you will use like that. It is for the entire home. All the members in your home can watch the TV. Suppose let's take that a father has given a mobile phone to you. Now what you will do once the mobile phone come into the picture you will install all the applications and also you will keep a lock. If someone want to use your mobile phone then they need to take your permission. How they will take the permission? They will ask you please enter the password so that I can call to my friend or I can use the WhatsApp or I can watch a YouTube some short film in a YouTube all these things but before using your mobile phone, they need to ask your permission because it is your own mobile phone. So now let me discuss within what is the local variable. The local variable is we have said that we have a main function. We have the user defined function. Suppose let's take that I have declared a variable inside the main function. Then I can use it only inside the main function. Similarly, let's take that I have defined one user defined function called sum okay then in this function i have declared a variable called a then this variable suppose let's take that it is int a data type also we should specify okay now it is a local variable this variable you can access or you can use it only inside this function so that's why it is local so the example is your mobile phone if it is your own mobile phone, you can only use it. But someone else can use it with your permission, but here it does not permit. So any local variable, if you have declared inside a particular function, you can use it inside the function only. The scope or the life of a local variable is only for a particular function. Now, if I write it as a global variable, then the main function can use and all the user defined functions also can use. So the example is your the TV in your home. 
everyone can use the t way so the global declaration variable meaning is that whatever the variables you have declared as a global variables those variables you can use it in the entire program meaning is that inside the main function you can use it inside the user defined functions also you can use it so that is the basic difference between the local variable and global variable uh, okay and detail about the local variables auto variables external variables all these things we will discuss when we are discussing about the scope of the variables now we will discuss about the main function the main function is the starting point of the program execution okay it consists of two parts one is the declaration part and the executable part remember one important point if you are using any variables in the c program before using them you should declare them is it clear suppose let's take that you have written a statement called c is equal to a plus b now here c is a one variable a is in another variable and b is in another variable equal and plus are the operator so before writing the statement you should declare a particular data type if they all are integers you should declare with a data type called int and then you have to declare them a comma b comma c so the declaration part consists of all the variables everything will be declared and in the executable part you will write the executable statements okay and then user defined functions will consist of whatever the functions you are declaring such as some add your own wish you can keep the name as per your wish so this is about the basic structure of a c program i hope everyone have watched the complete video and you have understood if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day